Okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna try to sit. Okay, well, if you haven't met me, my name is Savvy Dobbs. Um, I'll give you a little bit of work. I've been doing photography for 15 years. I started with equestrian photography because I'm a horse person. Some of y'all already knew that. Some of y'all came to the outing to my farm where I keep my own horses and few others, and we did an outing there. Um, I also do weddings and I do portraits. I did get my bachelor's in photography at JU, uh, graduated in 2019, and then now I'm a middle school teacher teaching math and reading. I don't know where the, that came from, but I love it. Um, but here's a few of my work uh, and going further. But um, what I'll be talking to you today is on Civil War reenactment. So it's different than the horse world. Uh, so a little bit about with this presentation and talk I'll be talking to you about. Um, I'm going to talk about how I got into it because, like I said, I started with horses. How do I get into reenactment photography? Um, how to prep for a reenactment, the photograph, the equipment, what to look for um, to, uh, to capture, um, editing, and then I'm going to talk about Alesti outing and then give you a history about the Alesti. So how I got into Civil War reenactments is, and photography is I've been going to them since I was a child. My dad is a Civil War reenactor. Um, to give you a history of how, no offense to that, what I'm about to say, you might get your feelings hurt. Uh, my brothers have Bible names. So I have two older brothers. So my brothers have Bible names, Luke and Jacob, and family middle names. My mom got the name of My name is Savannah Lee. And he wasn't going, my dad wasn't going to name me a Lusty or Gettysburg or the bloody battle Shiloh. So Savannah was one of the options. And my middle name is Lee after Robbie Lee. And my horse's name is Bonnie Blue. So if that doesn't tell you how big of a Civil War family we are, I don't know what will. Um, I've been taking pictures at Alesti for years because we go every year uh, and then it improved over time. I've taken my film cameras out there. I actually have some of my film work in the back. I've even taken my brownie camera. I'm a big camera history person. I love to try all different film. I've done the tintype. Um, and just any type of camera I love, and I've taken it with me to the reenactments. And so here's the, oh, uh, fam my family's very big at going to reenactments, so that's a family, or some of our family members as well. And some of my work before I go more into depth, this is some of my work, I do, I love black and white photography. So a lot of my work is in black and white when I do creative photos compared to my business. I, obviously, I have a few colored images in here, but when it comes to Civil War reenactments, I love to show the black and white version of it because I find black and white gives a story more than color does. So when it comes to prepping for reenactments, uh, I'm going to use a lusty as a lot of examples because that is the big one coming up. Every reenactment is different, but just to give an idea how to prep for one, you always want to understand the schedule ahead of time. Um, I always, I kind of know how like Lusty ran because I've known for a long time, but I still kind of look at the schedule. Um, have a plan of what kind of shots you want. Say, I want to focus on very close up images. Don't, like, yes, when you as photographers, photographers, we get to places and we do take a lot of photos, but if you have a set plan, I feel like like you want to do something more of a story or close up, have that mindset. So you're not going all over the place, just trying to figure out what kind of photos you want at that moment. Um, research the photos of the event ahead of time, what to expect. Uh, if you go on Google, you can just say Alesti or Gettysburg or Shiloh. Um, there's plenty of more. Um, but, and also make sure you check the weather all the time. For this is for any event. Alesti changes every year. We have camped when it's 19 degrees before, and we have been there when it's 80s. So make sure you're comfortable, bring sun, um, prep for sunscreen. Please bring comfortable shoes. I run around a lot, especially, and I'm going to talk about when I run around a lot at Alesti. Um, I, like I told you, I don't stay in one place. I move around. It's like when I do weddings, you never know where I'm at because I just can't sit still. So I wanted to give a little bit idea of a schedule. Um, you can go to the Renat, um, like Alesti's website. They do have a schedule. This is last year's. Um, I wanted to put it up a little bit and I'll be sharing my PowerPoint with anybody that would like it. Uh, 
when we do our outing, what there's different events that are going on, the main events, but not everything that happens at the re reenactments is on the website. Because uh, like I said, I know a lot of what goes on and I don't see a lot on there. Um, and then my favorite part, not many, when we've done the outings in the past, they have never made it to this far because it is a long day. But my favorite part about Lusty is the, the ball. We do a ball on Saturday night that we dress, my family dresses up and we go dance. It's at eight o'clock at night though. There's always one photographer there that takes really cool photos. If you do come to our outing, that's probably the best event at the ball because it's so much fun. So moving on to, as a photographer, what we need. Um, every photographer is different. This is just an example of what I personally use. Uh, so I will shoot, uh, I'm a typical reenactor family. I use a Canon because why go to a Civil War reenactment without a Canon? Um, <laughs> My dad and I were ready to shoot some yanks here in two different ways. Uh, you, uh, I bring two different cameras though. Uh, I always I like to have one with a shorter lens because there's different things that goes on. Because um, when I have a long lens, especially like if I was at a horse show, I would keep my long lens with me 24 seven. But like this event, I like to have both. Um, the cameras I use is I have a Canon 5D Mark III and a Canon 70D. With my 5D, I, since that's my um, full frame, I like to have my 70 to 200 millimeter on there. Um, I do wear a wrist brace because a whole day of shooting uh, it has the help with the weight. If you use one, you know how heavy those cameras can be. I just photographed a horse show on Sunday without my wrist brace and I couldn't film my wrist at the very end of the day. Uh, and then I have my 70D has my 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Um, and then, like I said, you can use, I've seen everybody else use different cameras. I've taken my brownie camera with me. So if you do film, this is a great place to take a film camera. Um, and then my brownie was probably my favorite camera I actually brought to LSD. Um, people did not know what it was. They just saw me, it was, that doesn't know photography, it was very interesting conversations I've ever had. And when I explained that as a brownie, especially the kids, they say, well, you can't eat it. <laughs> so I get that with my students at school as well. Um, but yeah, the, any questions so far? I know, I think I'm going a little too fast. Uh, but um, any questions about equipment or anything so far? Or good, yes. I personally never use filters. I did way long time ago, but I personally don't use filters anymore for any of my work. Um, I know what they're used for, but I just personally, but if you do you know how to use them, um, it does get sunny, especially on the reenactments um, on the, the battlefield, but I personally don't really use them. This is this was shot with the iPhone also. You can also take photos with your phone. Um, but uh, yeah. So here's a, I, uh, with my uh, 5D semi millimeter 200. I think I had all the way to 200 because um, you never, these people are all the way out and you can't always get close. So it's always good to have your um, long lens. Or I, this is the longest lens I own. So if you have anything longer, highly recommend taking it again with a wrist brace if you're. Don't want sore wrist. And then a few examples uh, with my short lens. This should give you an example of when you're finding something close. I definitely, with especially the Canon, I'm gonna back up just a little bit. I don't wanna go all too, I do that all the time. I keep on backing up because my lens is so long, you want to have that short one. Like you, cause you never know what you will come across um, as the reenactments when you get to uh, the battle, uh, you want to get close because I definitely was, when you, if you ever, raise your hand if you've ever been to a Lusty, you know that's really far away. You know that you have to sit back and if you know it is very crowded. So trying to get around and everything, you have to have a long lens for sure. 
So I'm going to, um, so the next couple of slides, I'm going to um, do different places. Like, again, I'm more focusing on a lusty, but like I said, every reenactment is different. You, um, I'm going to go about different spots to look for um, when you're at reenactments. And I'm going to start with horses. Uh, that's where I start. Like, you, if you need to find me, just go look the horse, horses. I'll be there. Probably trying to get on one and not be told no. Um, and actually, I'm hoping my goal is in a couple of years to actually be in Calvary. Uh, we've, I've been saying that for years, but I finally just got a baby horse who I'll be competing in mounting shooting in the next three years. So um, I'm hoping that he'll be my next, get to be out in the field with the family instead of shooting with a cannon on the sideline. Um, and if you're ever, and I'm going to throw this out there as well, ever want to see, like, even though it's not fully reenactments, if you keep an eye on Clay County Fairgrounds, they do mounting shooting uh, competitions. I just did one this past weekend. They had people actually dressed up in the time periods of war or other type of wars for Calvary. Um, so that, that gives you an idea because a lot of those competitors do a lusty. Uh, and it's really fun to watch. Sadly, the next one is the same weekend as the Lusty. Um, so I don't know how that's gonna work out for those competitors, uh, but it's a lot of fun. Um, the only challenges about Calvary camps is, I don't know if you can tell, back then they did not have RVs or tents that looked that modern. That is my least favorite thing about the Calvary camp is I'm not that fully talented in Photoshop, so that's what you get from me. Um, so anywhere you look, you, you're going to get a camper. Um, a lot of Alessi stuff, you're, except Alessi if you're actually the camp itself, you'll get the RVs, tents, kids in modern clothes running around. Um, I'm pretty sure the halter that's on the horse is not from back then. Um, I think back then they actually used rope. What was that? Oh, in the plastic bucket. That at least blends in with the ground a little bit more. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's the same halter my horse has, and I got it from horse.com, so they didn't sell that. So, like I said, I'm going to talk about it, then I'm going to give examples. Sometimes you're lucky and you don't get an RV. Um, this is one of my favorite images. Um, I, like I said, I've been doing photography at Lusty for years. And anytime I can get um, even how, because sometimes cavalry people there, I'll see that some of the horses are thin, but when you see like a bond that they, felt, that they care about the horses, that's my favorite thing to capture, even in modern time. Um, at horse shows. Um, so this is like one of my favorite. It's just to see the connection, even in a civil war environment, than just a horse show or the barn. It's a different environment that not many equestrians get to experience. Um, but I also like how it, this one, you can actually see the type of equipment the horses used back then. This is actually, I don't have this personal bridle because that's not the time period that we have now. The next location, um, this is, and I'm going to kind of briefly say, uh, this is where we're going to be meeting. Um, they have a lot of battlefields have memorials and cemeteries. Um, scary part is we've been at Lusty on Friday the 13th and gone to the graveyard there, but nothing happened. Um, it's funny though, I've been going, cemeteries are one of my favorite places to photograph, but I could not find any of my photographs from the cemeteries there. Uh, I used to have a really cool one, um, but I've been through moves, so I don't have my old hard drives, so I don't know what happened, but I do have a lot of the memorial there at LSD. They have a really big memorial right when you walk into the right, if you've been there, with um, flags, and then the, here's like part of the memorial here. And then the, one of my favorites is trying to get cannons. Anywhere I go, again, a cannon, shooting a cannon. Um, I promise that's not why I have cannon cameras. Um, I got it because my papa. But it's fun to say when you're raised by a Civil War reenactor. 
Uh, but uh, again, like I said, I do a lot of black and white. If I, I feel like if I did, I've done this in color, but putting it in black and white, the Canon seems more, like there's something about it. Um, and same with this one. Canons are just, you can, if you know how to take good pictures, you know how to make them interesting more than just, just that. And I have a few with the, um, similar photos with the film camera as well. Say that again. I know they keep on getting my shots, so I gotta shoot them somehow. I gotta get rid of them, especially that one. That one. That's. <laughs> oh no, I'm getting. I'm ready for the. If you ever, like I said, been in Lusty, we have the train. Um, try camping there with the train. That's me. This is what I stand behind when it wakes me up at three o'clock in the morning, um, and I hear my cousin go, "My train." Uh, that's how our little backstory is because we had the train and they always like the blow in the middle of the night and we camp right next to it. So now I know how people feel when they actually have a house right next to it. I don't know how to do it. Um, I live in the middle of nowhere, so I don't, I'm lucky I don't hear anything like that. As here, you just get that whole loud train. Next is, um, this is where you probably find me the most. That's the second part. I'll say the horses are first, because when I get there, I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to go see the horses. Um, but this is the second place that a lot, as a teacher side, um, I spend a lot of time with. And I'm going to explain where you, I love the most. Some of y'all have seen it before, but uh, it's the stores and the educational area. area. Um, this is like right when you come in, and on the left, there's, we call them sutlers. They sell a lot of old fashioned stuff or books. They have different tents, the old fashioned dresses. Um, there's a blacksmith there. There's like a surgeon who fakes surgery. Obviously he's not gonna do a real surgery there or that would be really brutal. Um, he has fake bones and legs and all the fun stuff. And my favorite, obviously I said, I love the history of camera stuff. There's actually a lady that does tin types the process there. I'm actually about to, I'm friends with her. I'm about to contact her because I want to redo it just with me or I'm going to do it with my dad and my mother um, just to have it updated. Or I kind of, I'm trying to play around the idea. I don't, I think it'd be kind of cool if I went in my normal like Civil War dress with my digital camera and do that, to have the two different types of my life. Um, because you don't see that every day. She'd probably laugh at me and told me no if I did that. I always thought about taking my horse and working with her and doing 10 types, but she is really cool to learn a lot from. She does the whole process there, dark room, and seeing how it went from a negative to positive. Um, I have a few photos, photos of her. Uh, she books really fast. She does back-to-back -back sessions all weekend long. I think she's from North Carolina, if I could be wrong, because I know she moves around a lot. Um, I haven't talked to her since last February. Yes. Um, but my family's favorite, especially my uncle and my dad's favorite location is the blacksmith. There's a guy that there that does actually, they makes tools. Um, he has a little bit of an idea of one of the photos. And then, um, I don't know what he's making there, but he has a tent that he sells all the stuff right next to him. But all day long, oh, wow, I say all day long, but I hope not. I hope he breathes from the fire. Because I have a bit of asthma, and that will give me an asthma attack after two hours. Um, my poor students at school, if I smell any smoke in the classroom, they start freaking out for me. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he's used to it. But it's really cool. He blows, like he has a little pumper. I don't know the full terms. Um, that he does a whole process there. What was it? Bello. Bello. His son helps him. Yeah, his son helps him as well. Um, this is not, I'm not sure this is the thing, but there's a lady that actually has a very tiny mobile, like house back then that she takes around and she lets you come in it. This looks like it might be, it might be a different one because a lot of people are starting to do it. But if you ever have a chance to go to Lusty this year, she's there every year mostly. And she has this tiny little house. I've never taken pictures inside of it because it's kind of cramped and people are going in and out of it. But she actually sleeps in it during the whole weekend. Um, has a little tiny kitchen back then. Um, 
the bedrooms for kids on top and a bed. It's really cool. And that it's like a back then RV or camper, but um, it's very old. Like she has to put on a trailer because obviously you can't roll it down the street. And then they have the kids area um, where they have like old fashioned toys for the kids. Um, I remember when I was a child, this was my favorite spot. They also do little tiny, I haven't seen the past couple of years, but it comes and goes. They have little tiny reenactments for the kids. I remember when I was, again, horse person. I grew up with stick horses before I bought my own horse. Um, so I was in the Calvary, my little stick horse running across the field of the memorial as my cousins with their fake swords chasing and trying to stab people. Um, those are really fun places to photograph because it's very funny. It's just the kids in general. Um, and trying to see them read, um, experience this experiment, not experiment, experience. And it, that's also another, you see that a lot in this area in the settlers and the educational area. Um, if you do go, uh, just, and if you don't come to our outing on the Saturday, just don't come on the Friday. Because I say kids are cool to um, photograph. But Friday's field, day, field trip day, there's going to be not kids just up in that time period. There's going to be kids there that probably don't want to be there at all. Um, there's some fun photos as well, because I see every day with middle schoolers. Uh, but Saturdays and the Sundays where you mainly will get the kids dressed up that time period, um, having fun, playing with that. I can't think of the name at the moment. They have a little wheel thing that they chase with a stick. Um, and then they have everything laid out. And this is where my 24 to 70 lens comes in, or even a wide angle is, I can't get that with a longer. Um, so that's another reason why it's good to have a good variety of sizes of lenses. And then here's, sadly this is blurry because I borrowed it, I, I didn't have the full copy, but somebody actually took pictures of me helping. Christina is her name, this is a tintype lady. Um, I don't have it up right now, but she had me hold a, a umbrella because the, the lighting was so bright on the soldiers. So I'm like this, trying to make sure I don't have an umbrella shadow. That was probably the most interesting in my photography career is holding an umbrella and like, looks like I was dancing. Um, but she, like I said, puts, it's so much fun to photograph her and learn the process. Um, it's just like when I do wedding photography, my favorite shot is when people get in your way with a camera, it's just taking a picture of their phone taking a picture of the other person. Um, I do that a lot with her, even though you can't see the image, but just capturing the process behind the camera is a great learning experience for sure. Because she talks you through the whole process the whole time. If you tell her you're a photographer, she will talk to you the whole time. She's very funny. Um, sometimes I don't know if she's serious or she's in a bad mood sometimes. Um, depending on the lighting. She's like, I think any photographer, if it's just not working the way she wants, you're cranky. I, I know I am. Or I can be very, like, she's like me too. When I get the best photo, I hop in place and get excited holding my camera. Um, she does that as well. Uh, raise your hand if you ever had that, ex that experience that you get so excited that you just... My, I told my students that today, that I do that with the camera, and my one student goes, Oh, you're one of those preppy girls, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means, um, but I was like, not really. I just when you get excited, you just can't handle it because um, they don't understand how hard sometimes, even though we know what we want, sometimes it does not come out that way. Um, especially when I do weddings and I get that right perfect shot, I'm like, I'm ready to retire. Goodbye. Um, <laughs> Going on to the next location is uh, there's two different types of camps because why put the unions and Confederate camp right next to each other when we had the battlefield for that. Um, so the union camp is normally by the, the field, right? Am I right? Yeah. Union camp is normally by the field at Lusty and the Confederate is more by a little bit past the settlers. 
um, the stores. Wes, right? Wes. This is why I brought him with me. Um, but this is if you want to see them in their environment without RVs or tents and have actually the legit tent and feel like you're there, this is where you want to go. This is where you'll get that old fashioned feeling and feeling like you're there and capturing that moment like you're in that time period. Um, also, they do a lot of the inspections before. So anytime before the reenactment, you become a little bit like 30 minutes. I think they start 30 minutes or was it an hour before? So that's two hours. Two hours, between two hours. Um, they start inspecting the guns and lining up or finding their troop. And like I said, it takes two. So if you get there early enough, two hours, you can capture that moment of them prepping for the battle. So I'm going to show what you can find in those time period. Uh, and I don't have it up here. I wish I had the image. It's in film camera. But you're also going to have some fun if you want to make creative photos. Um, it, I had an image win a competition from Lusty when I was I want to say maybe seven years ago. Um, I brought a horse head to have anybody seen a horse mask heads that you see during Halloween. Um, my I have a cousin who is six seven six eight who wears he compete um, reenacts too. I had him sit in front of the tent, had that mask on, eating an apple, holding the gun. The title was "Stop Horsing Around and Fight." Um, I wish I still had that image, but it was you can be creative. Yes, we want to capture the moment, but have fun with it as well. Um, if you know me, I'm goofy and I like to make fun things. Um, so, but I also, you want to capture, is, is how great about reenactors is they want to feel, and they're used to being ca captured on a camera, they want to feel like that time period, and it'll give you that emotion. Um, So again, when they're setting up, some of them, and this is my family's favorite thing to do, I noticed that they set their guns all together. Um, I'll have my dad kind of explain a little bit how they do that. But um, if you can tell, that's not just one gun, there's four together stacked up, and that's how they keep their guns up, instead of setting them on like a tree. Stacking arms. Just capturing the moments before battle, before they fake die. Um, I have to say that because they really, it's just a reenactment. Unless you like my dad and have a bloody rag, a fake bloody rag in his head, it gets very dedicated in it. Uh, the magicians getting ready, practicing, they, they practice for hours. There's little kids to older adults that play the trumpet, the drums. My brother was actually a drummer um, years ago. Uh, The inspection. If you can't tell, they, um, especially this troop, they do, I can't fully remember, it's like a, they get cards and they stick the card in their head. The death card, they have a death card. Um, you see in their hat or in um, the hand. They try and figure out where to put the death card. Uh, oh, yeah, you take it off and you put it on the body of the union or the government. The opposing side. Yes. And then this is where the tennis shoes come along. Um, when I say I don't stay in one place, reenactors know me well because the my favorite saying I hear from reenactors, especially for Confederate size, going um, when they go into the woods, they go, "Weren't you just at the camp like two minutes ago? Like, how did you get here so fast in front of us?" I run really fast with my two cameras. You just see me going like this. I haven't attached to me, but um, because what they do uh, when they when they leave their camp, they start marching. The Confederates. This is what the Confederates do. Um, since my family is mostly with the Confederate, but they fight. They go back and forth. The Union the Confederate, but since we always on this side, they go through the settlers. They do a whole march up on that. And it's about maybe a ten minute march, but I cut through the woods. I don't go with them. 
once I get, because again, here I don't get RVs. So I try to, when it comes to March and the camps, this is why I try my best not to get the RVs because why? I don't get that lucky with the horses, but um, <coughs> unless they're with the March, but I, I book it. I have my water in one hand. And then I have, a, like I said, I have a little bit of asthma. So I have my asthma attack for a couple minutes before they come, um, get all that coughing out. But yeah, that's the famous saying I get every year is, where did, where, what, huh? How did, how did you get there? It's like, I'm a ninja. That's what I do. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have an evil twin and I'm her. Uh, but so they do the march, like again, do the camp and then do the woods. That takes you straight to the battlefield. So this is at the campsite. Again, to be honest, this image would not be as cool in color. I'm just gonna be completely honest. I have in color and this just gives that feeling of a story. Through the woods, step. Sometimes you can't borrow the people. Good thing she's looking that way. At least it's not an RV, but you are at a public place. And then as they go off. And now for the fun part, the battle itself. Oh, I spell oh, ignore the there. I just now realized I am a math teacher. Just want to point that out. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not very good with my theirs. I don't know what happened. Um, so again, raise your hand if you've been to Alessi. It's very crowded, if you know what I mean. And it's crazy sometimes. So if you get there a good time, Again, they expect two hours ahead. So if you have an hour to get to the re battle, get there so you can get front row. But if you're in the front by the rope, you have to sit down the whole time. Um, sometimes since I've been doing this for a long time, I know a lot of the reenactors. Um, I do. Last year I got there late because I, I'm shocked he hasn't disowned me yet, but I had a wedding a lusty weekend last year. So I had to miss most of it. But normally I get into the media spots um, and that's like right there in the middle. Um, but last year they had it blocked off because I think they were filming a documentary. Um, and this is where your long lens, sometimes you can get into, if you have a very, 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 very long lens, then the bleachers might be okay for you. And then try get the center you best you can. Sometimes I'm lucky, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I do have to stay. I don't have as many union because that gets crowded down there as well on the comparative side. And the middle is really crowded. Um, but like this here, and you're going to see this a lot. The also other con about a lusty is the tall grass. You have to sit down and the tall grass is there and sometimes you can't avoid it. But I have a few photos that you can take advantage of the tall grass. Um, again, long lens, front, I get, this year I got really lucky. Um, and since I know a lot of these reactors, I try to look for, like, here's again, when you say plan your shots ahead of time, I know people, I found like one of those commercials, you can talk to my people. Um, I, I try to focus on them because I know them and I know where to look. Then we try and just try to figure out who's giving the best emotions. I look for my people. Um, that's a lot when I wouldn't come to capture. I like close up and I like for my people. And having smoke in the background is my favorite. It just gives it the idea. Um, this image again, you've tall grass, can't always avoid it. Um, at the beginning, they do this every year. Um, I want to say maybe 15 minutes into, you will start getting an idea. You just never know when it's going to happen, but they make a square on the Confederate side. 
interfacing. This is when my eyes, my eye starts twitching because I hold it and I know it's coming, but you never know what's coming. So my eyes just starts twitching. I'm giving you an idea now that this will happen, um, this shot at LSD, um, at least on the Sunday. I'm not sure on the Saturday. Did they do it on the Saturday? Sunday. There's, just a, there's a big ground charge. We're facing out the square about a foot of us go down and that gets uh, Yeah. So yeah, they actually act like they fall down. It, nobody gets hurt oh, that I know of. I haven't seen a back then ambulance. Um, but my I think you will always hear the kids go ooh ah uh, when I haven't actually ever caught it. But trees do like little they when whoever does these explosions they do like fake trees or real trees that pop up into the sky. Palm meadows. Since when? I never saw the bodies. <laughs> Oh, I, even though I know it's fake, I will actually cry if I saw something flying over there. I couldn't take pictures. Um, you think they're dummies? <laughs> this got dark real quickly. Uh, but that definitely happens. Just get ready for you to have your eye like this for a long period of time. Um, my eye, even after doing even at weddings, I'm the same way. It still twitches, and I have a headache later on. But at least, at least I got the shot. That's all I care about. Um, again, sometimes color does work. Um, like, but I like to do more of a darker tone color. But then like with here, sometimes when you get that expression, color does work. As here, there are two different shots. This one feels, as a black and white photographer, this is my favorite image. But there, um, you can always capture the, they're, these reenactors are dedicated. They know that you're you're photographing them, so they're going to do anything in their power to get let you get that shot. And then they do after if they're getting shot for time, they do run back a lot, so that's a great shot to get. Um, and try like I said, actually. I don't know any of these people, so they're not my people, but at least they get the shot. <laughs> and this is when the tall grass comes. Some people might like, not like it. I think it's kind of cool when you try to get the tall grass. Um, it, it won't be as cool if it was in color, um, but the tall grass that gets in your way. Like I said, the, the grass is about this high. Um, and if you're sitting here this low, it, it's kind of it's kind of hard to avoid it. Like, hmm? Say again? The thing about sitting down, does that then forever? Or? Yes, or you get yelled at. There's been a few years I've been yelled at by people behind me. But you can get there on the bleachers. The bleacher, if you have a long lens, the bleacher. Um, but if you are on the ground, it pa the past couple of years has been even more strict. Like, um, park rangers will come down and tell you to sit. Or you have people that um, spectators who tell you to please. I can't see. Um, if there's nobody behind you, you're lucky. Um, the past couple of years, except um, 2021, it was actually canceled the reenactments itself because of COVID. Um, but the years before that, I have not been at least where I want to stand. I get lucky when I get into the media area. Um, that I can at least kneel, but if I'm like not in that area, then I get yelled at. How many people do bleachers hold? You say there's a lot of people. A lot. Uh, well, the weekend is about, let's say it's about 20,000 that attend for many Saturday Sunday. It's gotten bigger throughout the years, though. Hmm? No, it's first come first serve. As I said, try to get there as like, if you want the inspection, come when it's first happening. You just will miss, miss the march because the march happens a little bit closer.
And then, yeah, I already had that picture. Again, I also focus on the horses. That's my main focus because they're cuter. No offense to being actors. Um, that's going to be future me one day. <laughs> my horse might not go forward. He might go back and go, go home. But at least we were there. It's what I'm hoping in the future. And then the um, finale, there's always a least well lusty. Like I said, I, it's been years since I've been to just other battles because due to being an adult and my family, we haven't been able to go to many other reenactments in years. Um, but they always have a finale at the very end where they have, do they do the unit on Saturday and the, or do they do both? I can't remember. They both line up and they come to the front. First, they just walk in like normal. Again, my people, they, they spot me. Um, and so I always get that point. This is like one of my favorite images of some friends from Lusty. But as they're walking, getting ready, then they start coming in the front of the crowd um, to acknowledge themselves. And first, they have the moment of all the dead rises, um, come back to life. It's like Easter morning. Um, <laughs> but, uh, they just rise from the dead. At least they don't make zombie noises because that'd be kind of creepy. <laughs> I always wish that they even out there for a moment. It's just a little bit weird. But they just Don't hate me what I'm about to say, but you might because you, you, you told me throughout the years it's harder to get up. Yeah. That's why you don't die. Uh, <laughs> now I still, I won't be able to get up after laying down. My feet will be asleep. Because there are cacti out there, cactus that people might have on oxy. My cousin came one time. He goes, "Look at my wound! Um, I fell on a cactus." Um, this this seemed to be like you would see it here in the bleachers right here. We used to fire over the people, and now they we face them, and then we get ready in about face, and then the cannon does their thing too. And this is a um, yeah. This is a moment that. I would never put in black and white because of the um, the flame in there if you're lucky. Um, again, this goes to my mounting shooting side because I capture mounting shooting. I always like to get the sparks in the fire. Um, if you don't know what, mount, uh, what mounting shooting is, we shoot blanks and the, the sparks pop the balloons. So it's just the same as what we actors do with the gunpowder. Um, you always get some type of, if you hold, I'm very big about holding the button because you never know. You will at least one of the guns you'll get. I think I got one. Yeah, I got one over there. But this is an image like I might have in black and white. But it, even though I love black and white photography, this is a time during my reenactments that I will never really have a black and white image because it doesn't feel the same mood as I get with this image right here. So. Um, Moving on, so I gave you all the different locations. That is what you mainly will see at reenactments, is especially at Lusty's, the different, there's so much that goes on. You will get a lot of images. Um, I think I always leave at least with 500 images by the end of the day, um, maybe more. I might be not thinking too much. I might have over 2,000. You never know. Um, but uh, I use, when it comes to editing, though, again, um, it's different for everybody. I use Photoshop. Um, I try Lightroom. I know a lot of some reason I'm not a Lightroom person. I had to use it in college a few times, but Photoshop is my first love. Um, I do shoot raw. Um, raw is your best friend. So to give an idea of how I get the dramatic look, to be honest, I don't know if I paid for this kind of. Um, preset, but I have, um, if you go to the filter little button, I try to make the prettiest error, arrows, but like, I don't know how to really draw really, I'm not a digital artist, so this is what you're get. I have a really ugly arrow on the next page, but I click um, right here in, this, in the one spot when it comes to uh, camera raw, and I click when I go to black and white, I have, my favorite black and white is the flat, 
I just love the way it looks compared to the punch or the low contrast. Something about the flat gives it that historic look. Um, and then, uh, like I tried all the others, there's sepia on there. And I know back then sepia was more of the tone. I'm not a very big sepia person. I don't, I don't know why. I, I tried and I was like, this is not me. Um, but just something about the flat is why I use a lot for a lot of my, even not just my civil reenactments, I do it for weddings, but I can brighten it up. But something about it can work for any image. Um, if you have seen my work before with black background sessions, I do horses. Sometimes I do black, black and white black backgrounds, and I use the same thing. It's just something about it helps with the texture, with the, the highlights, the shadows. I don't know what fully is, but it's one of my favorites. So once I click on it, I do go back. Look, my digital art arrow. Um, I really don't know what I was doing there. I think I got a little arrow happy. Um, so I go back to the original editing, the edit, and I just play with my highlights and my blacks. Um, when I do my photos, even for, even for weddings and stuff, or portraits, I just stick to the whites, the highlights, a little bit of the black anyway. And I spit with the videos because I like to have the black corners for all my images. I just feel like it draws your eye. That's just my style. Um, and then it depends on the image. I do sometimes, this one didn't work, but I will use texture if it, because I find sometimes, especially depending what you're photographing, some of my images has that extra texture to give it more of a feeling. This image will not work because then it would just look kind of funny. So moving on again, a lusty. Um, I'm going to go in depth, and then I'm going to let um, the man that got me into this talk to you a little bit about the history, so you're prepped for the knowledge of the reason behind not just lusty, but civil war in general of reenactments. Um, but Battle of the Lusty this year is always, even if you can't make it this year, but you always want to know when it is. Is always President day weekend every year unless there's COVID again and they had to cancel it then you'll hear about it probably we only had that happen like we ever had to cancel us day once the only time i don't get to go is if i have a wedding i won't i won't cancel unless day for portraits or horse shows but weddings if you're a wedding photographer you know that's where the big bucks are and i have two horses i have to pay for and a dog and sometimes a food bill for me um, my horses, my brothers always joke around. Every time I do a photo shoot, my horse is ready at, ready at my door, ready for the money, because that's what it's going to eat. Um, but this year is February 17th to the 19th. Our outing will be the 18th. Um, did we say 10? It's 1030. Um, Nancy and I are going to be work, working on it. Um, we're going to meet at the memorial. Uh, I talked about at the beginning with the cemeteries and memorial. We're going to meet there at 1030. I will um, give y'all a little bit of a tour. I can't promise you I'm gonna stay with you the whole time because again, my family's there, but I'll take you to our camp so you can take photos. I have convinced in the past years, my dad and my cousins, because they love photos anyway. Um, I even messaged this PowerPoint to my cousin yesterday, go, hey, I'm doing a Civil War enactment photography talk tomorrow. And he's like really excited for it. So they love their photos taken. Um, and then give you an idea where everything is, and then you're on your own if you like to figure out where you want to be. Um, again, there is a lot of walking. Their battlefield is a distance. How, do you mind, how, how long do you think walking wise? There is uh, shuttles, so they have little golf carts if you can't walk. Shuttles on the highway. Oh, you have to park. Where was I? Don't park normally outside. So where was the parking? It's across from the collection. Okay. I have VIP parking on the campgrounds, so I never know how it is outside. Um, but yeah, so I think that's where y'all meet the settler, and then we'll meet at the memorial, um, and then we'll start at the the settlers area and the educational because it's right there in the memorial. And I'll take y'all to, of course, I'm, you know that I'm going to take you to the Calvary camp, whether you like it or not. I'm going to show you the pretty ponies. They don't let you pet them. Sometimes you do, but. They, some of the people there actually talk about the, 
the tech itself though from back then. It's kind of cool. To, it's more of an educational experience as well than just taking pictures. Um, and then I might take y'all like towards the end as they're getting ready before, because they're going to start getting their uniform on, uh, at least the ones I do Saturday. Um, and then I'll take y'all to the, the camp where they're starting to set up. And then after that, I'll let y'all um, go wherever. And I'm going to probably introduce y'all to Christina, the Tintypus as well, depending how busy she is. Um, I might, I'm not 100%. I'm tr like I said, I'm trying to book her again for me. So maybe that, I think last time we did an outing, I did it then, y'all took a lot of pictures. Um, that might be, if it's just me, photograph, she'll give you more of an education with, if it's just me. Yes. Saturday's battle is usually at 3.30. I'm going to go back. Uh, Oops, let me have seizures. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you can bring a folding chair. Is that a time? Yeah, is it time? Okay. Yeah, he's next. I, I can't even see the time for me. I'll say like an hour and a half before, probably. Um, sorry. I'm going to go back. But that's the schedule. Um, so that move forward, I'm gonna let the guy that got me just give you a brief history. So I'd like to introduce you. Well, I call him Ted. Did you ever hear Ted? That's his initials. I don't really call him Ted. I call him Ted. But he's on my phone. So this is Phil Dobbs, and he's gonna give you a little history lesson of Alessi. Okay. Yeah, so you can stand right here. <laughs> Okay, I'm uh, thrilled to be here. This is exciting. I was here for a gallery exhibition, I should say, uh, a year or so ago. And I'm um, so happy to see the next generation grab onto this and take a facet of it, such as photography or the history of it or North Florida history and learn about it. Uh, I got nephews and they bring their friends. You saw some of the pictures out there. And uh, those guys are they're amazing. My, I assume you sent that to Sean. Yeah. My uh, one of my oldest nephews, Sean, is so into it that he had a one brother finish at Troy State, and he had a musket waiting on him. Yeah. And they're eight hundred dollars now or more. Another one just finished in May, Mississippi State. He had a musket waiting on him, so he's got them out there, and they bring their friends every year. And my brother, which is their dad and his wife, and uh, it's great. We we always lucky to get the same spot out there every year. And uh, it's kind of rough looking, but nobody else wants it. So we grab it and set up tents and all that. And this is one of those nephews wants to do blue this year. I've never done it and I'm not against it because it's you're teaching history. So this is a sack coat, a little longer than a shell, shell jacket like the this here. I wore this in the movie. Did anyone see Glory? I wore this in Glory on Jekyll Island, and they started hand-to-hand -hand filming at a Lusty for Glory. I mean, the film companies had it made. There's 2,000 guys out there, women dressed out and pretty authentic. They didn't have to worry about wardrobe and the, if the period was correct. This you would find in later war because uh, gray wasn't really available much. And that's the first shell jacket I had, which doesn't fit too well now. And then I've got the gray sack coat like the blue here that we I may be in this one this year, which I could wear, you know, pretty much you have sky, sky blue pants on both sides. Uh, a lot of the guns you see here, like I'm holding there is a uh, 58 caliber infield, which is the most common one from um, London Armory, which is still in operation. <clears throat> uh, this is a, you've seen a lot of the basic slouch hat which is the most protective from sun and rain. And then the, they're called the Kepi, a Lieutenant's Kepi here, and then a bummer. Looks like people say bummer, that's the, has a higher back to it. You see a lot of that. This is, and if anyone knows what Gods and Generals, uh, Robert Duvall and Stephen Lang, I did that in Virginia, had that one on, and they put powder all over us before we went in to look authentic. So that was <clears throat> good. No, well, this this does, a Lieutenant, and the only one, I've, first one I've ever gotten, I got to be a Sergeant. I'm not usually 
usually an officer much. We don't, I don't go all over doing a bunch of the events. But uh, no, those are the, the standard hats. You know, a lot of times a slouch hat, the brown one you'd bring right off the farm or wherever you could get it there. And um, no, they had insignia normally on your jackets, your collars, and epaulets, you know, on the shoulders. But the first picture you saw of Savannah in the red with her camera was another historical setting. She's in front of the governor's palace in Williamsburg. And she's gotten shots of that in all the seasons. So that's another period. I'm, I'm thrilled to see her interest in that and stirring your interest in this event coming up tonight. And what a lusty mainly was about 159 years ago this month, uh, President Lincoln wanted to cut Florida off from the South because Florida supplied most of the turpentine, the lumber, and the beef to the South, which may not have been a lot by then, but he was trying to secure that. So he wanted to bring Florida into the Republican mold for the upcoming election, 1864. So he sent barges, they were stationed up in uh, Hilton Head, sent them down Jacksonville, you know, was occupied twice during the war by the Union. And uh, he sent barges down under Quincy Gilmore, the general. <clears throat> he got a little nervous about uh, hearing reports of troops, opposing troops uh, further west. So he goes back to Hilton Head, Savannah area to get more supplies and men and tells this young Truman Seymour, a young, I guess, lieutenant or captain to sit tight in Jacksonville with his troops. Well, he's a young guy and he gets anxious and wants some glory and some fame. He starts heading west out towards Sanderson, if you know that area, Baker County, and didn't realize that they ran into uh, about 5,200 Confederates at the Battle of Velocity. They had about 5,500, so it was pretty well balanced, matched, even in uh, field pieces and cannon. But he didn't plan on that, and uh, that's where the Battle of Velocity ensued. Early morning in the Palm Meadows, a lot of guerrilla type fighting. A lot of the Southern soldiers came from well, Western Florida, South Georgia, ones that just possibly had deserted and changed their minds, decided to fight again, to go into action. And a lot of them were kept over in Alabama and could be there really pretty quickly at that time. And uh, General Sherman was sitting in Meridian, Mississippi, waiting on reinforcements. It was kind of a law in the whole war at that time, 1864. So nothing was really going on. And uh, when Quincy Gilmore was told by uh, John Jay, the young, Secretary of State for Lincoln, he, he said, man, I'll do it. I, I'll, go to, I'll go down to Jacksonville and we'll secure that whole area. Because uh, nothing's really going on, but he, he was surprised that way. Casualties were for the North about 1,860 and for the South about half that, 940 to 50. Um, they sent a lot of those. We joke about the train that Savannah mentioned comes through the track is loud. Now, during the virus and the economy was shut down quite a bit, we didn't hear maybe one train last year, but usually it's every two or three hours and it just echoes through there. And you finally fall asleep and they have to blow. You think they're being mean, but they have to blow that horn at the junction because it's a railroad junction going, you can tell if they're going east or west towards Lake City on Highway 90 and uh, they knock you out of your bunk and that's uh, an experience. We had a friend that camped within 50 feet of the track. He didn't realize it. Uh, <clears throat> he never did that he again. Was the, he was the one that we just wanted to have fun with. Yeah. <laughs> He's been doing it longer than, than my family has. But it's an exciting time and we're out there to learn and to teach and it's very authentic. There is a a troop camp and if you can walk through that at dusk or in the evening it's it's amazing there's nothing like she said you know you, you do see rvs and things like that but then there's an authentic area where it's all the troops and that's they're singing and there's music and they may have coca-cola but it's in a tin cup and things <laughs> like that and it's a uh, something to see it's like like you're there it's gone from here from uh, 1,200 
uh, blue and gray to 12,000. 12, yeah, I mean, like you get that includes medical and everybody out there. Uh, so it's, there's a lot, a lot going on. You can pick and choose. Now, the ball, it said period dress attire. Anybody can go if you're going to go out in the, in the light under this large tent. Um, this wide and twice this room long, I guess, and they have authentic bands. You can be there in the shadows and nobody's going to pull you off if you go out. Friday night they do. You don't have, dress. they have a practice ball. You don't have to dress up on the Fridays. Yeah. Um, but period of tire is what they prefer, especially the Saturday night is, is the main ball. And you have a brass band and a string band. They take breaks and alternate. It's so, you have a collar that tells you about the Virginia reel and the promenade and all the different patty cake polka and all the different type dances. So it's a lot of, and it's the way it was. They had barn dances where blue and gray would meet, have a good night together and go out the next day and you'd be shooting at each other. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way it was. See it, we, I, we'll say, we'll see you in my sights. <laughs> so, so that is gonna be our end of our presentation. Um, so if you have any questions, I know we had a few. Um, for you could just say either for me or him. Um, you had a question? So I just wondered, how did you get into this? Was your family in the Um, not at a lusty, but uh, yeah, they they served. I I've always loved it since I was a kid up in Marietta, Georgia, and when I went to my first, they called them mock battles back then, and they weren't as authentic. They got better. They probably used had cowboy boots and shotguns, and just went out and didn't went through the motions and. I went to one and that was it. And then just have read all for years about it. I've got many books and I saw a paper in 1988 of a guy named Joseph Lorenzen and it said they're fighting again. And it was, they had just gone to the 125th Gettysburg and it had a number of contact for him and for the, the Northern troops. And I called him and we were instant buddies and he guided me right away. and. I see him out there every year. He usually does the blue, wears the union and the side, and that's that's just how I started. Thirty-two years now. I've died probably twenty-nine twenty-nine times at least. <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't work out. I'm loaded and ready, and then we advance and we're on their cannon. All of a sudden, it's over. Ah, well, oh, I didn't get to go down. Yeah. He get, like I said, he gets a bloody rag. He has a fake bloody rag, and he comes back. And goes, well, I didn't fall, but <laughs> uh, gives it more authentic. Yeah. I wish I have a picture of that. And there's a lot of different, sometimes we'll do school programs, dress up, and you can take it if they, you know, you get it approved, take a gun in and pop just a percussion cap. The kids love it. And, uh, and then do the formations. You get up volunteers up. And they call it doubling where we march through. The, the big march Savannah mentioned is the battlefield. We could be out there in six minutes just through the palmettos and those trails, but they take us on Sunday all the way around. We're doubled, which is four guys across. And it's impressive with all the bayonets and they take it through there because that's where the settlers are and all the modern the food court they call and there's people everywhere so it's for them to see back through and see what we're all about and the immense depth of it really any others questions i know we're getting tight on time any other questions yes <laughs> Yes, the War of Southern Independence. Now, there was a picture that you mentioned that where my buckle was upside down. If you capture off of a guy, off of a Union soldier, if you take his, you usually get his boots and his uh, buckles and things or accoutrements, leathers, and it's U.S. But we just flip it over and it says, it looks like SN, Southern Nation. <laughs> well, that's a little tricky thing. My dad got a kick on you because you act like you're trying to get their gold teeth out, which is very cruel. I mean, the man's dead or dying, and you're going after their gold teeth and taking their boots off because the southern, the south, did not have everything. A lot of shoes. And they were just farmers. They were good fighters from hunting all the time, but they didn't have a lot of the supplies that the northern troops had. So uh, if you go out there, I, I hope you do, and I hope you can see everything and be careful. I'll be the one with a hat and a gun. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll probably take a hit somewhere in there, but that 
that square that we form is impressive because we're like this and as they don't look in whenever that ground charge goes off it blows things everywhere and it, my famous saying to one of you is nice knowing you yeah <laughs> is my name on the well <laughs> yeah. we got to work on that oh it's fun <laughs> Well, what's funny, when I walked in the room tonight, I just happened to put my hand in my pocket, and what have I got? An earplug. <laughs> Y'all have, you have covers and caps for your lenses? <laughs> we have earplugs and these cork, cork looking things that go on our guns. Keep the rain out. Thank you for being here. Oh, yeah.